Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where Karen's bad decisions result in OP becoming homeless. Am I the jerk for blaming my wife for our homelessness? My wife and I are really financially struggling and we moved in with my mom to help us get back on our feet. I know it hasn't been easy on her, but I just can't believe what she did. So my stepsister is getting married and wouldn't invite my mom as her and her siblings hate her. My stepfather refused to attend without my mom and it was a whole big thing. I think his kids thought that he was going to cave because he was always a pushover with them, but he meant it and he didn't go to the wedding. I'm sure it hurt him, but he comes from a pretty toxic culture and he isn't going to openly show his emotions. My wife was upset on the day of the wedding and she believes that kids should always come before your spouse and that his behavior was disgusting. I don't disagree, but it also isn't our business. My wife took some pictures of him the day of the wedding to show my stepsister that he wasn't sad enough. He was just hanging out with my mom and in one of the pictures he's laughing, but I find this extremely uncomfortable for a few reasons. It's creepy and invasive to spy on people and take their pictures. It's just weird. Also, we are guests in their home. Well, his daughter sent him the pictures and said she was glad he has his jerk wife to comfort him. He realized what my wife had done and he blew up. He called us ungrateful leeches, called her a jerk, and he threw our clothes all over the lawn. I'm furious. Living with them was such a great opportunity to rebuild financially and she just ruined it. I lost it and shouted last night that it's her fault and what did she think was going to happen? Now she's furious and says I had no right to speak to her like that regardless of what she did. Your wife spied on people who are helping her, took their photos, shared them to talk behind their backs, and told you that you can't tell her off for her bad behavior? And you're married to her, why? Why would she go through all this effort over something that doesn't concern her? It sounds like she needs a job or a second job to occupy all her free energy. I wonder how the wife contributed to the financial issues in the first place. Bruh, she'd be my ex-wife. Bad person. I'd go back and ask for their forgiveness and let your wife figure out for herself what she's going to do. If she wants to play stupid games, she can win stupid prizes. She also sounds like a very shady person. I would wonder if she's ever taken unflattering pictures of you and sent them to others. I'm 38 male. Am I the jerk for telling my fiancé, who's 27, that her wedding dress choice is way too extravagant and suggesting alternatives? We're getting married in July of this year. The venue is booked and the wedding is pretty much sorted out. Emma has been researching dresses and has a little scrapbook of lots of dresses she likes for ideas, but is now looking to buy. All that's left to get is the bridesmaid's dresses and the wedding dress. We jointly put aside $10,000 each for the wedding. Everything is paid for and we have $6,000 left over, which I think could go towards the honeymoon on top of the honeymoon fund that we already have. We aren't the extravagant type at all. Then comes the time for Emma to pick her dress. I know everything is more expensive when it has the term wedding attached to it, but what I wasn't expecting was a $950 dress plus a $120 veil. I'm using my dad's old tux he used for his wedding to my mom. Just had it taken in a little. Emma can't use her mom's dress as her and her mom both say the style hasn't aged well, which is fair. I had a quick Google around at dresses online and there were so many. And so many just like the one that Emma wants for like $50 to $100. I'm not trying to get her to cheap out on her dress, but she will literally wear it once. One dress for over $1,000 is just insane. That would fund our honeymoon. I tried to show her some dresses that I found on a recommended app called Wish and others on websites, but she was having none of it. She's very slender, but apparently wants it specially fitted. It turned nasty, unfortunately, because I said I refused to drop such a large amount of money on a dress, and she argued that she's using her own money for the dress, which isn't strictly true, as we're about to marry and our finances will be joined. Then her mom had to get involved. They offered to pay for the dress, but it's not a case of not being able to afford it. It's a dress. There are identical ones online at a fraction of the cost. I thought she would be ecstatic to learn that there are identical dresses for a fraction of the cost, but she was really angry and upset. Am I the jerk here? Is there something I'm seriously missing? Because after we argued about the dress, Emma has been extremely cold towards me. Then yesterday, she said if I want her to cheap out on her wedding dress on her wedding day, that she really needs to consider if we're a good match for marriage. I'm blown away that she would say that over a dress. I told her she's like a toddler throwing a tantrum over a sparkly toy she can't have. That was a mistake as she left to stay with her parents who called to tell me that I am a jerk. Am I the jerk here? Edit. Emma found this thread. It was a mistake to post here and I'm sorry I posted our problems on Reddit. I am the jerk. Emma, 
ask yourself if your fiancé's behavior here is a one-off. There are some concerning things here. His insistence on controlling your purchase made with your money, even if it's funded by your parents. Is he controlling in other ways? Has he ever been insistent on you spending your time and money only in ways that he approves of? And does he usually lash out when you don't do what he wants? The way he's resorting to name-calling because you wouldn't capitulate to his demands, calling you a toddler throwing a tantrum, instead of communicating with you respectfully. This is made especially worse by the fact that his demands are unreasonable and stem from a fundamental ignorance about the subject, wedding gown costs, what knockoffs are and why they're a bad idea, etc., and that he's shutting down your attempts to educate him. Does he normally communicate with you openly and respectfully? Does he normally get angry and go off on you when you disagree with him? Are you normally able to have conversations with him on difficult topics that are calm, respectful, and productive, even when you disagree? Maybe you're both cracking under wedding planning strain, and this is an out-of-character moment that you can work through. But maybe this is pointing to a larger pattern. Proceed with caution. Remember, you're about to enter into a pretty intense legal and social contract with this man, and that you're signing up for a lifetime of conflict resolution with this person in particular. The way you both approach disagreement and handle conflict now reflects how you'll be likely to continue to do so going forward. Now may be the time to double check with yourself if this is the right move. And after reading through these comments, I would also encourage you to look at his behavior here on the post. His responses to new information is not to take it on board and process it, but to double down, plug his fingers in his ears, close his eyes, and refuse to listen. The lengths he'll go to to avoid admitting he was mistaken are a bit troubling. It may also be worth asking yourself if there's a reason someone who is so insistent on always being right may have for seeking out a partner who's a decade younger. I'm wishing you all the best, and I hope this works out for you. OP. I thought I'd have a look through the comments to see if anything explained why Emma has blocked me and her phone is ringing through voicemail. I seriously can't believe people started a witch hunt over a dress. I watched some YouTube videos of wish wedding dresses, and yes, wish is trash, I get it. I wish I was wrong about that site. But to end up blocked because you have all told her that I'm mistreating her is just vile. I called her parents' house and the line's off the hook. So if you see this, Emma, call me, please. I won't shout. I won't get mad. I just want to end this crap. Get whatever dress you want. I see that I was wrong. I'm sorry. Spelling's bad. I had some whiskey. Can you blame me after this? Emma, if you see this, run for the hills. Men who are almost 40 marry 27-year-olds often because they are manipulative and going to pull crap that a woman his own age wouldn't put up with. He's too old for you. You're seeing signs of this behavior now. $950 for a wedding dress is nothing. He's already trying to control and manipulate you with your finances and you aren't even married yet. Don't go through with it. OP, you're a massive jerk and she shouldn't marry you. Later post from the bride. I literally don't know where to start. My fiancé, we'll call Greg, I don't know what came over him. It's completely insane. We're getting married this summer, and the argument started over my wedding dress. I picked a very simple and traditional gown that was already discounted as it's an ex-sample gown. My absolute idiot of a fiancé decided to post to a subreddit asking for opinions or more likely validation on whether he was being unreasonable. My dress is under $1,000, but will come to around $1,500 with alterations. We have over $7,000 left in our budget, that's another thing that seriously upset me, that he lied in his post multiple times. I make a much higher salary than him, so we agreed that he would put down $5,000 towards the wedding and I would put in the rest. But why lie? Why ask opinions if you've skewed the details? I had absolutely no problem with this, as he makes just above the minimum wage. The thread got way too much attention. I had already gone to my parents because I was angry about him calling me immature and shouting about me being spoiled. I also happened to find the thread shortly after he made it because not only did he use my real name, his throwaway was his real name, followed by his alarm pin. He sent me a text saying that he wasn't the jerk in this situation and I just knew he would post it on Reddit. It's not the first time he's posted on Reddit about things. But nothing of this magnitude. Anyway, I don't know what to do. There are people online now claiming to be me and it's been shared on Twitter and Facebook and I'm just absolutely mortified. He got totally hammered last night and called my parents. My dad had to hang up on him because he was screaming down the phone and my mom was disgusted. I can't get my money back on the venue or anything. I recently started antidepressants because I've been feeling low, but now I just feel empty. This whole thing was about the cost of my dress and he suggested I use the Wish app to get an identical gown. First, he refused to listen to me that Wish is garbage, but he also argued it to the death in the comments. I read every single comment in that thread and it was like being punched in the gut. 
I can't get over the odd lies either. He gave out my real name and his, but he lied about the age gap in the budget. I'm 23 and he's 43. He looks much younger and for the first few weeks dating, I thought he was in his early 30s. We also have only been together for a year, not two years, and I'm starting to think this was all too fast. I need help. I need advice. I know I'm quite possibly pot calling the kettle by posting to Reddit, but I post here a lot usually anyway, and all the fake accounts claiming to be me might throw him off anyway. Ex-fiancé made a post three months later, struggling to get back into the dating scene since my fiancé left me unexpectedly. A few months back, I was going to be married, and long story short, things were called off. She wanted to end things, I didn't, and I feel like I've lost all my trust in others. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I was dating someone called Isabel up until last week. She's really amazing and kind, but the second she heard about my ex and the fiasco that surrounded it, she ghosted me. And it's become a pattern. At some point, no matter how close we're getting, they hear about it from a friend. It just comes up somehow and they bail. I just want to know how to behave or what I can do to make things work. My last girlfriend, Casey, when she broke up with me, she said the issue was that I hadn't changed from who I was when my fiancé left me, but I have. I hardly drink at all now. My job is steady and I'm a good guy, but I think the issue is that I'm suffering from small town syndrome. Everyone knows everyone here in this little town. Please give me advice on putting this behind me. I'm honestly desperate. My life was about to move towards a phase and now I'm stuck in limbo. I need a girl to fill that place so I can move forward with my life. Wedding dresses off of wish. Now I've heard it all. Am I the jerk for not giving money to my partner when I, 29 female, already pay for everything while he, 38 male, takes care of the house? So I, 29 female, am the breadwinner of this household. I'm working full time as a nurse to support us through the summer. I own a business as well, but the business doesn't have work in the summertime. We're aiming to work for my business together as partners starting this autumn and I'm making large investments to make it profitable for two people. These investments are to cost around 50000 total. We had agreed that I go to work because I make more money as a nurse than he does at his profession and he'd take on the household and caring for business-related machinery and prep work for autumn at home. We agreed that he doesn't contribute to any household costs, I pay for everything 100%, and the additional investments to create work for him as well. These investments have included a car, other machinery, personal gear, etc. for him, which I am paying for. Also, all of the food, outings, etc. I cover 100%. As you can imagine, money is tight right now and he knows it, as I've told him the true state of our financial situation. Now he told me he feels insecure because he doesn't make any money and he has to ask me for things to buy, food, supplies, etc., and is asking me to pay him a salary of some sort for the work he does regarding our business. I refuse this, as I pay for all of the utilities and business-related costs regardless. He feels this is unfair for him, and I don't value his work and effort because I refuse to pay him a salary. Am I the jerk for not paying him a salary? Edit. I forgot to add in the original post these details. My partner does not shop for food or other things at all. I do all of that as well. I also do the cooking, cleaning, laundry, and household chores. And for growing, my business is misleading because he's a partner in the business. I've already bought him a car and personal gear to use. Edit 2. I'll try to explain a bit more because some of you seem confused. Initially, my spouse quit his job because of poor working conditions and bullying. He's been unemployed for five months so far. I've been supporting him this whole time. He started helping around the business stuff out of boredom when I was working in my business and then we started planning on creating more work for the business to support us both. I don't want to paint the picture that he's a lazy jerk because he does contribute and he's trying his best. I hope this clarifies our situation better. You don't have a partner. You have a sugar baby. You need to decide how much longer you're willing to deal with this transactional kind of relationship. You're the jerk. Yes, you pay for everything, but in this scenario, if he wants to go buy something, he has to talk to you. He has no financial independence here. If your genders were reversed, people would be howling that he was financially mistreating you. Not the jerk. No kids yet, right? He can go find a job for his extra money. You're the jerk for being with him at all. You're in a relationship with a guy who quit his job because he was being bullied, and you're surprised he's a loser who expects an allowance from you? Am I the jerk for calling the police on my nephew after he stole from me and squatted in my house? I, 45, female, am in a difficult situation with my nephew who's 25 and my family, and I need some perspective as I simply feel terrible about the whole thing. Last year, my nephew lost his job and couldn't afford to stay with his friends anymore. 
Having helped raise him and having such a deep connection, I decided to help him out. I had recently bought a house over the summer to rent out, so I let him stay there until he could get back on his feet. I also gave him $3,000 to help with living expenses and such. A few months later, he landed a job at a major tech firm, and during Thanksgiving, he bragged that his starting salary was almost as much as I've been making after 10 years in my current job. I was naturally very enthused for him and extremely proud. I decided after the holidays, it was time for him to move on and get a place and start paying rent. As spring rolled around, I urged him to find another place to live or start paying me. I also told him we could forget the 3000 and just move on. He refused, getting really upset and saying it was convenient for him to stay since it was close to his new job and that he was not in a financial situation to be paying rent right now, which confused me as I previously stated he was bragging about his salary. I then offered to let him rent the property for a little more than the mortgage, which was less than what I planned to charge other tenants. He refused and has barely spoken to me since. I really struggled, but my family insisted that I give him a 30-day notice to vacate the property, which I had notarized. He ignored it. I then started to talk about eviction. We got into another argument when I got to repainting the house, with notice, because he had scuffed up the walls. He kicked over my paint cans, ruining the carpet. I had no choice but to file for eviction. It was all simply too straining. I had some valuables and furniture I had stored in the crawl space, and I had been too afraid to move it due to tension. I found that he sold my retro games and my consoles, two paintings, my dining room set, and a few other things through a camera on my property. I called the police to file a report. He came home during this completely out of his mind. Turned out he was on things and he had them in his possession at the time. He also had a DUI. My family's now furious with me, blaming me for ruining his life. His parents won't talk to me and they claim I knew he was on something when I called the police, when he hadn't even come home yet. They say that I should have called them before the police to settle it. I feel like I did everything I could to help him until he crossed too many lines. I just am so stressed and guilt-ridden, I just needed to hear some opinions. Not the jerk. He's the only person who ruined his life. I wonder if he was lying about the job altogether. You were a good family member and gave him a hand when he needed it. He then was ungrateful and refused to abide by the agreement. I wonder how much his family knew and is enabling his behavior. Am I the jerk for leaving a family reunion early because of my cousin's unannounced pet? My husband, who's 28, his family has some annual reunions, and this year it was hosted at his aunt's large rural property. Everyone was excited because it's a big event where we all catch up, play games, and enjoy each other's company. One of the cousins recently got a dog, which she adores and brings everywhere. However, no one mentioned that there would be a dog coming to the reunion. Here's the thing, I have a severe dog allergy. When I arrived at the reunion and saw the dog running around, I started feeling anxious. I approached her and gently reminded her about my allergy, hoping she would understand and maybe keep the dog in a separate area. Instead, she got defensive because she didn't remember I had an allergy. But then she told me that she would keep the dog away. This obviously didn't happen. The dog was running around. I tried to participate in the activities, but within an hour, I was already sneezing and my eyes were itching terribly. I couldn't take it anymore and told my husband I had to leave. He was sympathetic, but suggested I should try to stick it out. When I insisted on leaving, some of his family members overheard and gave me a hard time for overreacting and ruining the fun. I drove back home feeling frustrated and left out. I left my husband there and a family member would drive him home later. Later, I received a series of texts from his aunt accusing me of being dramatic and saying that my departure made everyone uncomfortable. Some other family members echoed her sentiments, saying I should have just taken allergy medicine and stayed. My husband was also frustrated because he felt caught in the middle. He wasn't supportive of my decision to leave early and made it clear that he was disappointed. He thought I should have tried harder to manage my allergies and stay for the sake of family unity. His lack of understanding added to my stress and made me feel even more isolated. However, a few of his family members understood my situation and said that I did the right thing by prioritizing my health. Now I'm conflicted because I hate the idea of causing family tension and having this awkward situation with my husband but I also feel like my concerns were valid. So, am I the jerk for leaving the family reunion early because of my cousin's unannounced pet? Why were you meant to stick around at a party when you were sick, miserable, and suffering? I'm so sick of people thinking that antihistamines are some type of magic bullet that instantly cures any allergy. I have to take mine days in advance, and even then, they minimize the symptoms and stop me getting really sick, but they don't magically stop me being allergic to something. Your husband's lack of care and consideration was appalling. Ultimately, he'd rather you be unhappy than his family be unhappy. 
What's the point of family unity without love and caring? Were you your husband's designated driver? Is that why he was so annoyed at you leaving? Definitely not the jerk. My wife is demanding to cheat on me and I don't know what to do. My wife and I have been married since 2001 and together since 1999. She's the most intelligent, thoughtful, caring, loyal person I know and I've always thought of myself as fortunate to have met and married her. She is, even today, aesthetically beautiful and men have told her this throughout our marriage. She has always shot them down. Earlier this year, she was diagnosed with uterine cancer, stage 1, and had a full hysterectomy. I was never concerned about the cancer. It was diagnosed early, dealt with quickly, and she made a full recovery. I took time off work to look after her after the surgery and everything seemed well. There were some to be expected emotional distances on her part, and although I'm not an emotional person, we dealt with them together. After her recovery, she was insistent that we start living life to the fullest and took a 10-day trip to Europe, followed by a trip to Belize. We also have a trip to the UK and Spain and Portugal later this year. I'm fine with these things, building memories and crossing bucket list adventures off her list. I also understand that these are a result of feeling fragile on her part. She also took up yoga, swimming, and healthy cooking classes. I was fully on board until last week. Last week, she came home from work and told me she wanted a hall pass, a one-time opportunity to hook up with someone else besides me. She said that since her cancer diagnosis, her outlook on life has changed and she doesn't want to be handcuffed from doing things she wants to do. She explained that there's this guy at work that she has always had some attraction to. He's leaving the company and she will never see him again, so this is the perfect opportunity to hook up with him. She said that I could say no, of course, but that she would be mad and disappointed at me for an indeterminate amount of time and that it would be confirmation of my male toxicity and insecurity. I don't consider myself to be toxic, and if not wanting your wife of 20 plus years to hook up with someone else is insecure, then I guess I am insecure. I told her that I appreciated her talking to me about this, but approval via coercion is not approval. I also said that I do not appreciate her language in describing my, as of yet, unknown reaction to this very large issue that could affect the rest of our marriage and life. I got up in the morning and she basically said that she was sorry for putting such a large decision solely on my shoulders and that to help, she was taking the decision away from me. She booked a hotel near where her coworkers are having a party and send off for this guy and she would spend the night there with him and hoped that I would be here when she got back. That she would answer any questions I have about the night after it happened but not before. She will not tell me who he is or anything about him because she knows me too well and that I will dwell and obsess over him. And that would make it too real for me, which is pretty accurate. Her point of view is that the less I know, the better, which contradicts the offer to tell me anything I want to know after it happened. I know she knows I won't want to know or ask anything or she simply will not tell me. Part of me thinks at least she has been honest with me and she's been through a lot since finding out she had cancer, so maybe I should just let it happen. I certainly have no concept of what she went through, so I can't dismiss how this affected her mental state and outlook on life. Part of me wants to put my foot down and say this is not going to happen and deal with those consequences when they happen. Her BFF called me callous for even suggesting that I wouldn't let it happen because I have no idea what she went through. I find it hard to believe that she's okay with the possibility of throwing away 20 plus years of marriage over some guy that she has no real relationship with outside of work and that I should just call her bluff. Maybe she thinks similarly that I won't throw away the marriage because of one encounter. I just don't know what to do. I empathize with her and then an instant later I'm angry with her. Part of me wants to know who this guy is. What does he look like? What has he got that is so enthralling for her? Is he just a safe option? Is he married? Does his wife know? Would I be a callous jerk for saying no? What can I do besides walking away? Kind of think this is the way your marriage will be from now on. With her epiphany, she wants to relive her life and she's going to do it regardless of your feelings. I think she's being selfish and probably only threatens this because she thinks you are beaten down and will simply put up with it. Perhaps not the best time for trips and frills. She wants the single life. Let her see what that means. OP She thinks because she'll never see this guy again and that I've never met him, supposedly, that it won't really affect me or our marriage in the long term. I'm left with accepting it and never viewing her the same way again are going through a divorce at 54. Not really great options on either front. I don't know where her head is and the bout with cancer is affecting her in ways that I couldn't possibly imagine. I don't think she believes I will leave. Update. I was hoping that my opposition to her plans would give her pause, 
but unfortunately that did not happen. I said I'm a hard no, and I'm not sure how I will feel about you if you go ahead with it. I was met once again with, this is for me, it will be one time, what can I say to help you deal with it, you'll get over it, we were meant to be regardless of the situation. She kept saying all of this leading up to Saturday. She left Saturday, ostensibly to meet her co-workers, but in reality to hook up with the guy. I asked her to text me when she was leaving for the bar, and when she did, I asked her if she was really going to go through with this. After her response, I'm not answering any more questions tonight, I'll see you tomorrow. I blocked my wife. Then I did something either stupid or brilliant. I went to the bar where the get-together was happening. Well, not the bar, but a transit bench across the street. I waited for a long time. It was running through my mind leading up to this event that I need to know who the guy was, maybe to compare myself against him, to see what he had that I don't. It was driving me crazy not knowing who he was and what was so special about him that she would ruin a marriage for. After what seemed like an eternity, a woman that I recognized from my wife's office left the bar and got in a cab. Soon, other people started filing out and a whole group came out and people were hugging a man and shaking his hand. I assumed I had my guy. I didn't see my wife and had a brief thought that maybe she called it off. I unblocked her and there were no messages. Everyone said their goodbyes and left. Dude was standing outside for a few minutes and then my wife came out. She looked around, took his hand and started walking away together. Of all the emotions I went through, trepidation, sadness, anger, it was disgust that really encapsulated the event for me. This guy was short, fat, and bald. All the things I cannot compete with. Ultimately, I felt like a creep for watching from a distance. I followed until they got to the hotel and then turned around and went home. I woke up Sunday morning and put a lock on my master bedroom door. I moved her things to the spare room and left a note asking her to find other accommodations as quickly as possible. I visited another friend who's a lawyer and he gave me some sage advice and a couple of recommendations for divorce attorneys and made the introductions. My wife had been calling me numerous times since around 11 or so. Once blocked, the calls go to voicemail. I listened to the first couple but felt nothing but some satisfaction when she couldn't get through to me and she was obviously becoming concerned. I didn't want to go home but I left in such a hurry that I didn't plan an overnight properly. I got home around 9 and as per my buddy's advice, I recorded the interaction. I was halfway up the stairs when she came up from the family room asking what was going on. Could we talk? I thought we talked about this. I just answered with I'm not interested in discussing this tonight and went to bed. After not getting a response from me through the door, she left me alone. I feel kind of like a kid for not talking with her and shutting the door on her, but I just couldn't look at her. Monday I got up and got ready for work. She was waiting for me and asked if we could discuss going back to normal. I said, you've been doing all the talking for the both of us for the past week. Why don't you continue? And I left for work. I have an appointment with the attorneys my friend recommended for this week. Am I the jerk for telling my fiancé my daughter has to be in our wedding? I, 45 male, have a daughter, Polly, from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms and we share 50-50 custody of Polly. She's now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiancé, Sharon. Sharon and my daughter got along very well. After five years in my relationship with Sharon, I proposed. Sharon was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. She then told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted Polly to be a flower girl. Sharon looked at me funny and then she said she didn't think that Polly would fit the part. I got angry and told Sharon that my daughter would be in our wedding. Sharon started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and Polly wouldn't be one of them. I told Sharon that if Polly wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. I stormed out and took Polly to get ice cream. Polly knows we're getting married and told me she thinks she will look pretty, whatever dress Sharon decides she should wear. This broke my heart and I decided to text Sharon. I told her I would be staying at a friend's to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying that I overreacted and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding and I was a jerk for saying that I would cancel. So did I take this too far by saying I will cancel? Am I overreacting or just being a good dad? Did you propose alternatives to the flower girl position? I said I wanted her in the wedding in some shape or form. I wanted her to be part of our day and not sitting with the guests while we walked down the aisle. Fiance said it would be best if she just sat with my parents. Many have suggested a junior bridesmaid, but my fiance still declines. 
I did tell my fiancé she will be in the wedding, and if that means she has to be a groomsman, then so be it. Fiancé blew up, saying she's not a boy, and my side is only for boys. She denied my request to have a father-daughter dance with Polly, so this is why I'm rethinking the whole wedding. Sharon and I are going to talk tonight, and hopefully she will give me a full reasoning. Has Polly ever said anything about Sharon treating her poorly? Polly has never voiced any concerns about Sharon treating her badly. I've never seen anything happen between them, so this was very out of the blue. Surprisingly, Sharon has never had an issue with Polly until the wedding. The two have always been super close, so her reaction shocked me for sure. I would have never popped the question if Polly wasn't comfortable. I totally understand where you're coming from. I do think it's crazy that I haven't seen any signs. I've talked to Polly and told her to tell me if anything has ever happened. Polly can't recall a single time Sharon was mean to her. Update. Talked to her mom this morning because I wanted Polly to stay with her until this was figured out. Her mom said she hopes it goes well and told me I could stay with her and Polly if need be. She said Polly always comes home with nothing negative to say, so we aren't sure where this came from. Update. I came home to talk to Sharon today. When I pulled in our driveway, my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. I got out and went inside trying to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Sharon was sitting at the kitchen table and I joined her. She sat in silence, so I asked the first question. Why does Polly not fit the part? And why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answer full-on shocked me. She quietly said, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become a holiday visit only dad. I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand and pulled the engagement ring off. Her eyes started to tear up. She said we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change. I told her the damage was already done. I told her I wanted her things moved out by next week and that she should come get them when my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for. She stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on my door saying I was being unreasonable. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three or four times a year. The fact that Sharon wanted me to give up part of my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and Polly will be going instead. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.